the setup of the problem here is critical because what it shows us is it shows us the bits of the address that we cannot modify the first 24 it shows us the bits that we can modify and it shows us the portion of the address that is our new network portion where we can change the network number that we're calculating. Let's look at how to do this. So in networking, we always start counting with zero. We do not count with one in networking. We always start counting with zero. So to calculate network zero, what I do is I actually put zero in the network portion of my address where those borrowed bits are. So I borrow those three bits from my host portion, move them into network portion. Now what I can do to calculate network number zero is put zero in that borrowed bit section. So what I have to do here is convert zero to binary, which is zero, and then I fill it up in three bits. I then put five bits in my host portion. Since I want a network address, I put all zeros in my host portion. What this does for me now is it tells me what network zero is. Well, this is kind of silly, Ross, because network zero is the same network as the top one. And yeah, I know that. However, it isn't the same as the top one because it has a different mask. So even though the network address is the same, if I convert each of these eight bits back to binary, it's going to be 203.0.113.0. Except this time, instead of being a slash 24-bit mask here, it's going to be a slash 27-bit mask. So even though the network address is the same, our mask is different. Now that we know what the network address is, we can now calculate our first host. Now the first host address is always one higher than the network address. So all we have to do now is add one to our host portion. We add one to our host portion, and that tells us our first host address. This is the first address we can assign to a real device on network 203.0.113.0 slash 27. The last host of our network is always one fewer than the broadcast. So usually what I like to do is write the broadcast address down first, and then leave a space, though, so I can write my last host address. I know what my broadcast address is. It's all ones in my host portion here. So the last five bits, my host portion are all ones. I can calculate then my last host by just subtracting one from that, and it'll result in the last host I can assign to a device on the network. Now I have the entire range of addresses for network zero. I have my network address. I have my first host address. I have my last host address, and I have my broadcast address. What I do then is I now know what network number zero looks like. So network zero is 203.0.113.0 slash 27. The first host is dot one. The last host is dot 30. And my broadcast address is dot 31. But Ross isn't a broadcast address 255? No. The broadcast address is all binary ones in the host portion. There are only five bits in the host portion. When I put five bits in the host portion and convert eight bits to decimal, I result in 31. So my broadcast address is 31. This is the most challenging part, in my personal opinion, about subnetting, is that when we look at the mathematics in binary, you can see, we drew lines, you can clearly see where the network portion is of the address here, and you can clearly see where the host portion of the address is. And we see that all zeros in the host portion is the network address, all ones in the host portion is our broadcast address. It is very clear. It's only when we convert it back to decimal that we see the unusual numbers, and this is going to continue. Now another secret here is that we always have to be aware that the eight bits are used for converting the address from binary back to decimal. So when we convert from binary to decimal, we're doing it eight 
bits at a time, regardless of where our calculated network and host portion exist. I'll repeat that. When we convert from binary to decimal with our IP address, we're doing it 8 bits at a time. Nothing different. 8 bits at a time, regardless of where the line falls between our network and host portion. Okay? So, let's move on to the next network. So, let's calculate network number 1 now.